everybody, welcome to the studio of Fiber for the People Yarn. My name is Taylor Earl and I am the dyer of all Fiber for the People Yarn. You can learn more about Fiber for the People by going over to fiberforthepeople.com or you can follow me on Instagram at fiber.for.the.people. But if you landed here, it is because you are here for the next installment of the yarn dyeing vlog series that I host here on the Wool Needles Hands Fiber Journey channel. I'm so glad you're here. I'm really excited for this new season of yarn dyeing vlogs. My vlogs uh, always revolve around the yarn club that's going on in the Fiber for the People shop at the moment. Right now that yarn club is called Oxide and all of the colorways are inspired by the oxidation process of different materials and that colorful play that they create in that process. And so I'm so excited for this whole club. I actually have already done the first round. This is going to be round two of that club. Um, the first colorway was beautiful. It was so much fun to dye. And this next colorway hopefully is equally if not more beautiful. So you are here to come along that journey with me. Today's colorway is actually, um, well, it's not a colorway yet, I haven't dyed it yet, but today's plan is going to revolve around a color that you don't typically see in the Fiber for the People shop until just recently. If you do follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm currently on this mission to find the perfect shade of pink or the perfect pink colorway for Fiber for the People and that will probably end up with me having a pleasant collection of pink colorways in the shop. And so what I wanted to do with this colorway was choose an inspirational photo or an inspiration photo um, that shows oxidation, but that focuses or is um, predominantly pink in color just to see if I can flex those muscles or actually tone those dyeing muscles with that color because it is really, really tricky. You can find out more about my whole thing about pink and, and all of that over on Instagram. Definitely encourage you to check that out. But in the meantime, I wanna share with you guys the color scheme that I'm using or the photo that I'm using to inspire today's colorway. I wanna break it down a little bit, kind of dissect all the different parts of the color and get a little bit of an idea going into this, um, what I wanna do. I I always think it's really important to have some kind of an approach prior to dyeing the yarn. That way you have a little bit of an idea of what you can be doing with the different colors to work out in your favor. Because there's so much more than just throwing color on yarn. You kind of can think about how to bring depth, how to tone colors down, tone colors up, add all kinds of different undertones and various ways of dis creating light in your color and a lot of that comes from having an approach when you start. And so that's what this is, is a place for me to kind of hash out what it is that I think we can do uh, as a jumping off point. Now that doesn't mean that's what we're going to do, it just means that's where I'm going to start my thought process. If you've watched these vlogs in the past, you know that sometimes, um, a lot of time, it kind of changes over the course of the process because of different ideas that come up. I see how the dye is behaving on the yarn and perhaps that inspires me to do something a little bit different. So we'll see, we shall see how it turns out for us today. But without further ado, let me go ahead and show you the photo that I'm using for inspiration for Oxford side round two. Okay, so I have a copy of the photo here and I'm also gonna pop it up on the screen so you can see it a little bit better just in case there's a little bit of a glare here. But I'm going to kind of go over the photo with you and pull out various different parts of the color that are popping up to me and that I would like to kind of uh, emphasize in the colorway or what have you. So here is um, the photo. Now I do have a little bit of a glare, so I'm gonna try and turn it here. So you can see by looking at this that we have a big section of pink here. And it's not even just a pale pink, it's like fuchsia magenta pink. And I'm really, really excited about playing with this color. I've done pink in the past, don't get me wrong. It's not like I've never done pink before. It's just not something I spring to dye because it's very uh, tricky. I'm very particular about pink and um, so it's, you know, it's just not something that happens very often for me. So this is gonna be a really interesting colorway to create because this is also a very challenging pink. You see it a lot, it's done a lot. It's definitely one of those pinks that you uh, kind of imagine when you think of pink textile. But I wanna make sure that when we create the colorway based on this photo, that, uh, you know, it's not, it's not your everyday fuchsia magenta pink. There's something a little bit different to it. And I have a few ideas of how we can do that, but let's go ahead and get into the photo here. Um, the first thing I want to point out in this photo, because it was one of the things that caught my attention right off the bat, and that's these sections right here that you can see 
have blue in them. There's this really beautiful kind of, I want to say like a pale, pale pastel aqua blue that's going on in these little sections right here. And they're super pretty. Um, blue is not something that... Well, I don't know. I guess I think of blue and pink together, but you have to be really careful with blue and pink together or else you kind of break into the realm of bubblegum. And I definitely don't want that. I don't know why that just conjures up an image of bubblegum and candy and there's nothing wrong with the candy aspect of it, but just that bubblegum. I don't know. I got to be careful with pink and blue, but the blue that I'm seeing here and you can actually see it again up here is really really lovely especially paired with this deep deep and i mean i don't want to say that that's just black looks like there's lots of deep maroon happening in this section over here so a really fun contrast between the pink the blue and this really deep section over here this section here you can see that we have a little bit of rust coming through and this is less of a red rust it's almost more like the color of my shirt going on right here and i think that's such an interesting combination of or this is providing a really interesting combination of colors between the pink and this deep area over here and then these little blue areas and and you don't want to forget as well that we have pink this rust we have some blue and we have some black if you're if you're looking at this like i say from a galloping horse that's what we see pink rust uh, maybe you don't even see blue maybe you just see a real faded section it's a little bit easier to see it here but you don't want to forget these lighter patches where the color is less saturated that's going to happen on the yarn naturally you're going to have sections of yarn that just don't get saturated in color as much as others and that's going to provide us with those little sections here which i love that i love the sections of the yarn that are less saturated than other sections because they almost create that illusion of shine um a light play almost and i think that's really important to have as well okay so when I do this, I feel like my brain kind of goes in all different directions really quickly. So I want to narrow this down just a little bit. I have my notebook here. I want to write down some of the key things that I want to take away from this photograph. The first thing being that I want to start with a base layer of fuchsia or magenta. Okay, so base layer fuchsia. Oh my goodness, how do you spell fuchsia? Magenta. And maybe I want to achieve, because I don't want it to be all over. I want it to have patches of bare yarn coming through. So not all over. So we're going to talk about how we can maybe achieve that. And then I want to use, um, I want to tone down that fuchsia, or I'm just going to say pink so I don't have to keep spelling fuchsia. So I want to tone down the pink, kind of like what you're seeing happening here. Because you have bright and then you have dark. And in between, you have the toning down of this color. It's kind of like a progression moving this direction. And because this is oxidation that we're looking at here, you can kind of think about it that way naturally as well. This obviously is the color of whatever this t material was. This is most likely what it was painted. It was painted to look like this color. And then over time, as it oxidized, it started to lose that color. And now we're left with this black over here. Now that's kind of just what I'm assuming. I, I may be wrong about that, but there is a progression happening there. So you're seeing the color tone down until it's almost completely non-existent over on this side. So I definitely want to create that uh, kind of color going on here, that texture going on here on the yarn as well. So I want to tone down that pink and I'm thinking that a really great color to use to do that in this particular instance would be a really nice perhaps charcoal gray maybe even one that has a little bit of a blue in it because that's also going to help bring out these sections of blue that we see here as well so i'm thinking that toning down this magenta with a nice charcoal gray um, would, would be something there too so i'm going to tone down pink i want to figure out a way to bring that orange rust in without it being too much of an afterthought it's it's present in this photograph in such a small quantity it's only down here in the very bottom um you know section of this photograph and actually wait no i take that back i want you to see here these little spots that you see those are also that same color the only difference is that they also have been given a really pinky undertone so they're not quite as you know orange as this 
but they're still orange and they have a little bit of a pink undertone to them as well. You know, maybe a, an opportunity for speckles, something like that, and then we could carry it off in a different part of the yarn in a little bit more of a pure form where it's not given a pink undertone. So something to think of there. So we definitely have um, Russ sections. I don't know, you know, everything I write down here is all just like, pfft. Who knows what's actually going to happen on the yarn. These are just directions that I can go. So something to think about there. And then also too, um, I wanna mention in my notes that I want to bring this blue in. And what's really pretty is that the blue is happening on the pink. So not only are you getting blue, but you're also getting purple as well. I personally prefer, um, if it's possible to create a multitude of colors from fewer colors because then you're getting this really natural combination of colors coming together to create that third color or that fourth color or whatever your uh, blending situation is so i'll look at you straight face to face while i say this the more color you add to the yarn the more potential you have for muddying up the colorway and I say that because acid dye is and I've said this before it's it's a fickle mistress because the different dyes unless you're working with a pure dye that means that the dye is made from only one color most acid dyes are made from a combination of various different dyes that when they come together in hot water they blend to create this one color that you're going for. However, when you're adding that acid dye directly to yarn, you're not blending it ahead of time, so it's going to break on the yarn and those other colors are going to disperse onto the yarn. It's not super dramatic or drastic um, as it sounds. However, the more dye that you're adding on top of one another, you're almost exponentially increasing the numbers of color present on the yarn and so you have more of a chance of muddying up the color, if you will. So you have to kind of be careful about that. Um, so like I said, I like to create a multitude of colors from fewer colors because then you get more pure mixed colors. And I don't think that makes any sense. That's counterintuitive, but I think you see what I'm saying. The mix, the mixture of colors is a little bit cleaner and you have a little bit more control over that. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, back to the photo. So I definitely want to employ this blue and, and have that consequential uh, purple happen in the colorway as well. I think that'll be really beautiful. And then when it comes to these deep, deep, deep sections, I don't know if I want to use black for that because personally, I don't think that's black. It looks black to us, um, but I just don't think, and maybe black would be beautiful. We'll see, but I want it to be more of a gradual, de a, you know, deepening of color here. And I think black is just too much, too, you know, pushy. And I want it to be more gradual in that regard. So now that isn't to say that we don't have opportunity for black speckles. You know, I love my black speckles and trust me, I'm seeing plenty of opportunity for that here, especially these uh, peeling places where the paint is peeling away, leaving that deep shadow happening there. Perfect opportunity for black speckles. The, again, those orange patches here. So these are all things that we can think about as well. I'm ready to get started. I think these notes give us a really good jumping off point. Let's go ahead and prep the pans and then we'll talk about what we're gonna do first to get this colorway started. Mm -hmm. 